What's up everybody, Tom here with another video. In today's video, we're talking about everything to do with the markets right now, including the biggest news, and of course, technical analysis levels for the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Bitcoin, Tesla, AMC, Gold, and more. We're in September now, a highly volatile month of the year. And whether it goes down, it goes sideways, or it goes up, one thing generally does happen over this month, and that is that the VIX, or the fear index, tends to have some nice spikes. So will this be a great trading month? I certainly hope so. Stay tuned to find out more. All right, guys, well, as we begin the market recap here for the markets closed, of course, 31st of August, 2021, we're taking a look at the heat map here of the S&P 500. This gives us a really brief instant idea like that of really what's going on in the markets in terms of rotation through that session. You'll notice this is an all around random market. Some stocks were going well, Amazon continuing to do okay during this session, and some stocks were doing poorly. Apple was actually down overall and pulled the NASDAQ down a little bit there. When we go and have a look at the actual indices themselves, and we'll start here with the S&P 500, Dow, etc. You'll notice almost everything was down at the end of the day, except for the Russell 2000. And it was just barely down. I mean, 0.14%, 0.13%. It's nothing to write home about. What was more interesting is probably what this doesn't tell us. And that was during the Asian and European sessions, we actually did see a rise in the markets and then a fall in the markets to around the same point, then a sell-off, then a return. And we'll be talking about what that means very, very soon in this video because it's basically like some indecision at the peak up here. Let's have a look at the actual sectors now, which ones were doing the best, which ones were doing poorly. The ones that were doing the best the last couple of days, things like technology, semiconductors were doing the worst. We also had a bit of a movement coming in here to utilities, to XLP, consumer staples, and XLC communications. Nothing really to write home about. Again, not big market action, just very specific stocks in the last trading session. Let's get into the technical analysis now and we'll go through the dollar index gold and we'll move into Tesla indices and more. And there's a lot to cover off in today's video. But firstly, I want to talk about dollar index because it hit its really big first test. We've got here the 50 exponential moving average on the daily, this blue line. And we can see that the previous session created a bullish hammer. That bullish hammer is now looking to flow through. So basically, once we get above this 92 kind of 80 area, we've really consolidated. We've said, okay, we've found buying pressure and we're ready to move right back up. This is what happens in trading, especially a fluid thing like the dollar index where it's moving up and down, doesn't have necessarily a fair value at any one point in time. It's just what people perceive it to be. And once it gets through this 20 exponential moving average, if it does, it could really start skyrocketing. Remember, the larger time frames, such as the monthly, are now closed. And when we go and take a look at a monthly, it, while it doesn't look incredibly great, it could be very, very, very extreme if we get past this 93.20 over the September period. Let's have a look at the weekly just to see how it's playing around. So look at this. The weekly shows us the confirmation. We get a sell-off. We hit the 50 on the daily, we bounce up. Could we be seeing the start of a rally here in dollar index again? This is critical point. And if you're somebody that likes these types of things, you're looking very much at this level, this 20 exponential right on this 92.80. If it closes above, I think big things are coming here for the dollar index. You got long leg doji, bullish kind of wick hammer, and then a follow through. That's the type of thing that a lot of traders look for. And it's right off the correct zone being the 50 exponential. Let's move now over to gold. Gold, of course, also struggling as the dollar index strengthens, then that will technically weaken gold versus the dollar index. It's just floating around. We still have support here around the 1807, 1806 area. We've got some nice bounces there. We need follow through action. As we've been discussing, you really need to see that kind of follow through. 1820 will take us to 1830. And then past that, we're looking for an 1850, 1860 kind of bull hike. If you are going to see weakness, look for a close underneath these wicks, either or, and that should lead to further sell-off. We're basically at a neutralized point here for gold, and the same thing goes for silver. When we take a look at this chart, you'll notice while it did barely get through, have a look at this. We get the closure right on the 20, long leg doji, rejection candle, and it looks like negative follow through so far. Too early to tell on silver. We talked about this in the stream. Some people were looking at scaling in. 
I think this level is okay if you're going to take a very small percentage long, but really the big the big one here is this. Once it gets through there, it takes out all the stop losses, starts to effectively squeeze or put the pressure on, and that's when you get that huge participation, massive, massive movement. So yeah, with silver, with gold, still looking a little bit shaky. You guys can see the key levels and uh, make of it what you want to. Let's move over now to the stocks. We'll start off here with Tesla. And I've got to say, <laughs> things are looking a lot better here in the last couple of days for Tesla. We did a few things that we were talking about last week and through the weekend sessions. And that was that we broke and we moved above this point. Certainly a key pivotal zone for Tesla to be doing. That was a great trade if you took it through the Monday, a little bit of a scale in here. Then it came up, closed above the previous resistances. It came down, retested the 726, 727 in early in the session, and then actually ended around 735. You can see here long leg doji. We're looking now at some key points and we've got some big data here to come along with this. So let's firstly look at the Tesla heat flow map. And what I want to firstly mention is just like usual, when we get huge amounts of interest in Tesla, what tends to happen? Huge amounts of weekly calls get open. This was nowhere near as big through the Monday session as it is now. If Tesla starts to move through 740 into 750 and then even break 750, it could really be on because you could go very quickly through that level to 780. And the reason why is because what they're doing is Wall Street saying, well, we're not going to be able to keep it down. Remember, it's in their best interest to expire most options worthless. In fact, most options expire 70% worthless. So if we're thinking about where it is right now being around this price, Look at how many retail people are stacking options on the 740, 750 strike. That's the net between the pos between the calls and the puts, remember, as well. So there's even more calls actually sitting at some of these strikes, specifically things like 750. So it's a big thing. There are a lot of retail traders here. And more importantly, you've also seen the algo flow. So this is the positive price action on Wall Street and all the bigger trades coming through with the price action overall. That's an important factor when we talk about getting into price and knowing that price is moving with everybody. If everybody's on board, there's more chance that it comes through and it happens. So this is about as positive as it's been. You still gotta be cautious here, but we do have the breakout. We do have the long leg doji. We are in an uncertain time necessarily with the markets going into September and all these things. But if you're bullish, I mean, this is the right type of action, isn't it? We've got the 750 as the next target and then the 775 as the target after that. Great times here and I hope it comes through for many Tesla fans out there. I know there's plenty of them here on the channel. Let's hope this is the beginning of something better. AMC, another one that we've been bullish on for the last couple of days. Ever since we saw this nice breakout, we, we pretty much thought it would come down to this 40, 40, 50 range. It did so. It's been looking good. It's been following through. Obviously, a close above this 48 is going to lead to 52. That's really the thought process here. In terms of the algo flow, the algo flow wasn't that strong for AMC through the last session. That being said, it's not really unexpected. There's a huge amount of calls coming in, retails getting into it. Again, I'd be looking at breakouts past some of these wicks, like even look here on GME. It just doesn't quite get above. You know, it gets above these resistances. That would be exceptional. But there's some big breakouts that are still present here, and I'm sure many people are getting hyped up about them again. There was a bit of dispersion. People went and traded SPRT and all these other random codes. I haven't actually looked at that one. Let's look at it together now and see where it's at. Look at that. It's just, it's getting worse. And if we see AMC and if we see GME start to really ramp up, I, I again expect this to really start coming down. Money will flow out of this and then money will get into those other ones as people begin to chase. Remember, it's all about that psychology that we need to understand when we're trading. Psychology of the market is very, very key. Let's get into the indices now and we'll start off here with IWM. We're still trapped, guys. Look, if you're interested in IWM trading for any particular reason, you guys know where the technical level is for it. You've got the resistances here. You've broken through. It has bought off slightly off this zone. I'm not a huge fan of trading within the channel like this. I mean, if you're going to, you buy the bottom, sell the tops, that type of thing. Also, you can bring out credit. So you can make credit selling spreads, all of those types of uh, strategies are really great for when you recognize the range bound market, but it can be hard to trade in here on the daily. So just be careful 
of IWM. Then we'll move over to US 500. Now I've got the futures up here today. So firstly, I wanted to say there's our massive community trend line. And of course that has not or nowhere near been hit. That's sitting about 46.50 right now. But then we've got our most recent community trend line, which has been hit pretty much at the last couple of sessions. So if we if we lined it up correctly on the SPX, you'll notice it did hit. So that's around that 4550. 4550 is that key resistance level that we're looking to break for the S&P 500. We have the long leg doji on the futures. Look at this, long leg doji on the futures. Now, if we end up getting a bad session and we go down, well, of course, that could be the beginning of a little bit of a sell-off back to the 20 moving average. Remember, decision made comes off long leg doji. Long leg doji, what's it tell us? Indecision. We mentioned at the start of this video, we had that point with Asian and European sessions. What was going on? Every single, uh, during that time, we just had bullish, 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 bullish. And then by the time the US session had opened, we'd actually gone back to the open price. So that's where that long leg doji comes from. And it's going to be an interesting point. If we move over to the SPX, some of the key lines, you're going to have to really dial in hard here into the smaller time frames to find anything good. You've basically got the 4,500, not rocket science, but that's the previous resistance. And then you've got kind of this 45... 20 area which is where we found the support yesterday it's very marginal but that is where we found the support realistically it's tough to to pick rate technical levels you'll see here the one hour 20 and the previous little bit of resist support was found there this is what you're looking at i prefer the pullback down to this zone and then the pickup however that hasn't happened we've seen a lot of bullish sessions so realistically, you're dealing with the marginal levels at this stage if you believe in the continuation of this big bull run that we've seen over the last couple of days. Look at the daily here, quite a big amount of movement, huge candles here, pullback to 4,500 would not be obnoxious to happen, especially at the top of all these lines intersecting each other, which you can see here. So lots of stuff going on there in the market. We'll move over to the NASDAQ. Again, long leg doji, you guys can see it. Here's the indecision, the high, the low, the open and the close at the same price. If we get the pullback, there are some key psychological zones. I mean, you've got the 15.5 right around here, and then you've got the 15.4 just underneath. So that's right, that's resistance into the support. It's the same thing on the QQQ, as you guys know. You'd just be looking here at 375 as the support. So some key stuff going on for the smaller pullbacks if you're looking to day trade. If you're looking for the bigger pullback now, I guess you're looking for around 369. And unless it gets underneath 369, you're not really thinking the bears have much control. This is all by the dip style concepts. You're looking at specific stocks. You're looking at industry trades, practicing correct risk management, hopefully, guys. These are the kind of zones that people will be looking for. And then underneath here, well, if you do get underneath, then you think you're moving back down to 360. In terms of the bull side, I think tomorrow's video will be discussing quite a lot of the different projections that we could be seeing if we keep bulling. Remember, even though September is statistically bad over the long told, there is still a lot of bullish years in there. So if it does continue to go bullish for whatever reason, then we've got to start thinking about where are the next logical conclusions for these indices. And I guess with the US 100, it could be as high as 16,000. That really could be the next kind of movement. If you take the length here of that move, you consider that the pullback that you get and then you extrapolate that out like a flag kind of process, not that it really is, you'll notice that the leg moving into the other leg goes to about 16. Now, I don't think it's going there right now, but you never know. The price action is still bullish. So we'll keep following it and checking it out. Now we'll move over to crypto and we'll start talking about that. Remember, crypto is trading a little bit differently to the stock market right now and the other markets around the world. It's had that massive rally. It's now having a breather. This is a pretty negative looking candle. Again, putting pressure on the 20 moving average, which is a very key buy zone. This is the type of candle that if it gets that follow through action, could really snap through that 46. And remember, it goes 46 down to 44. And then after 44, we're looking at 42 and a half previous resistance. I like all of these zones um, from the perspective of what people are looking to do with Bitcoin and accumulate and stuff. Obviously, you make your own decisions. But if we go over here to BTC shorts, we're still not seeing the whales come in with the nasty shorts. They're not the ones that are punishing the market. So if this is a healthy pullback, if we get a 44 or 42 and a half out of Bitcoin and we don't see these shorts start to rise, is that pretty good? I think that's absolutely fine. 
And I do think that again, it's healthy for the market to go two steps forward, one step back. And it didn't really pull back very much. I know a lot will disagree with me there, but that's the importance of markets. If they go up a little bit, then they come back, then they go up, then that's a more sustained run. And remember as well, in 17, September tended to be a weaker month. And then October, November, and December were insane for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So keep that in mind. Another thing that you'll want to keep in mind is we have the OPEC meetings. If you're trading oil stocks, obviously OPEC meetings, always a big thing. Wednesday, starting all day for Wednesday in the American time. And then also we've got on the biggest thing or we'll be streaming later on this week in our live streams, we've got non-farm employment change. Now that's Friday, September 3rd. So there's so much going on in the markets right now. This is the big news. If you want to circle something and wait until maybe some actual volatility begins, hopefully non-farm should bring it. We know the Fed pretty much are not going to scare the market. You have to expect that. Interest rates aren't changing anytime soon non-farm employment change will be the key number that the market is looking for in terms of catalyst. So thanks so much guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe, hit that like button also, and comment down in the video down below, what is your favorite index right now? Is it the NASDAQ? Is it the S&P 500? Is it the Dow? I wanna know which ones I should be covering. So even if it's not an American index, let me know in the comments down below, and we always consider everything you guys have to say. Thanks so much, guys. Catch you in the next video.